The history of the periodic table. Mendeleev is given credit for creating the first periodic table. He was not the first person to arrange the elements, but he was the first person to arrange the elements in the way that we see today. So he took the elements on index cards and arranged them by increasing atomic mass. And when he did that, he saw that there was a repeating pattern of properties, so he set those elements up into columns. He left empty spaces, empty spaces for undiscovered elements and predicted properties of those undiscovered elements. So that's really why he's given credit, because he went above and beyond just arranging the elements. Because he arranged it by atomic mass, he did have a few elements out of order, um, like iodine and tellurium. They're actually switched on his periodic table. However, Mosley came about and said, you know what, that doesn't make complete sense, so why don't we um, order them by atomic n number, which will be the number of protons. So our modern periodic table is arranged by atomic number. Now the periodic table says that when these, I'm sorry, the modern periodic law says that when the elements are arranged by atomic number, there is a repeating pattern of properties. Um, and that's what we're going to focus on in this next section. So there's a lot of different family names, um, areas of the periodic table that you need to know about, and we made a foldable in class, so make sure you review that. Elements in the same column have the same number of valence electrons, the same charge, and the same properties, or similar properties. Again, elements in the same column, the same family, the same group, have the same number of valence electrons, the same charge, and same or similar properties. One thing that our periodic table also tells us is the atomic radius. Now, atomic radius is the same thing as size. If we look at the periodic table, hopefully you realize by now that the row numbers are actually energy levels. So the more energy levels we have, the larger the atom. So as you go down the periodic table, the size gets bigger because you're adding energy levels. So as you go down the group, the size gets larger because you're adding energy levels. Now as you go across, as you go across a row or a period, left to right, the size actually decreases. And that's because you're adding protons and they pull on the electrons. So you're adding protons to the, um, and electrons, you're adding electrons to the same energy level, and so the additional protons pulls those electrons in a little bit tighter. So as you go down from the upper right to the lower left, you're increasing in size. Another way to remember that is the lower left is larger. L L, L. So the lower left is larger. You're adding more energy levels. There's less protons pulling on those outer electrons. All right, so if we want to answer the question, which has a larger atomic radius, my suggestion is to physically put your finger on potassium and arsenic. And hopefully you notice that potassium is closer to the lower left of the periodic table. So potassium would have the larger atomic radius. It has less protons pulling on those valence electrons. Physically put your finger on fluorine and iodine, and hopefully what you realize is that iodine is closer to the lower left. It's in a lower energy, or a higher row number, so it has more energy levels, so it's larger. Ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron. And you can see that based on this reaction. You have an atom, you add some energy to it, and the atom loses an electron. And when it loses an electron, it forms that positive charge. If you have high ionization energy, it means that it's hard to remove electrons. And if you have low ionization energy, then it's easy to remove those electrons. So as you go down a group, the 
the ionization energy decreases. And it decreases because the electron is farther from the nucleus. So the positive charge of our nucleus isn't holding on to our negative electron as strongly as strongly as it gets farther away from it. Now as you go across the periodic table, ionization energy increases because those electrons are closer to the nucleus. So they're being held tighter by that positive nucleus. They're not going to be able to be let go as easily. So the larger the atom, the easier it is to remove. The smaller the atom, the harder it's going to be to remove. So as we go from the upper right to the lower left, then we're decreasing our, ener our ionization energy. In other words, on this side of the periodic table we find metals. So metals have a low ionization energy. They lose electrons easily. Where it's harder, up here in the upper left, upper right, it's harder to move the electron because they're smaller atoms and they're actually are nonmetals. So our nonmetals don't give up electrons easily. So if we wanted to put the following in order of decreasing and, um, ionization energy, decreasing would mean that we would start with the highest and go to the lowest. So if you physically put your fingers on potassium, fluorine, nitrogen, and lithium, we'll want to start with the one in the upper right hand corner and go down to the lower left. So our order then would be fluorine, nitrogen, lithium, potassium. So again, the lower left has lowest energy. L, L, L. Elect electron affinity or electronegativity is how much the atom wants to gain the electron. So now we're talking about gaining electrons. Because we're talking about gaining electrons, we don't discuss group 18. So we kind of just ignore it on the periodic table altogether. The smaller the atom is, the more it's going to be able to attract the electron. So it has higher electronegativity or electro electron affinity. The larger the atom, the less it attracts the extra electron. It's farther away from the nucleus, so it has lower energy, it has lower electron affinity. So if we look at the periodic table, if we go from the upper right to the lower left, again, we are decreasing our energy. The lower left has lowest energy. L, L, L. So if we wanted to put these in order, again, put your fingers on them. Zinc, bismuth, tungsten, cesium, potassium. We want to go in increasing order, so we're going to start with the lowest and go to the highest. So we would say cesium, potassium, tungsten, zinc, and bismuth. Ionic radius. Atoms gain or lose electrons to be like noble gases. Remember, we want to have those eight valence electrons. An ion is an atom with a charge. So an ion is when they've already gained or lost those electrons to be like the noble gas. If you lose electrons and you have a positive charge, and you're called a cation. If you think about that being a plus sign in the word cation, 
then you can remember that cation is the positive charge. Now when you lose that electron, your atom tends to get smaller because the electrons are pulled in closer to the nucleus. When you gain electrons, you form a negative charge. It's called an anion and the atom actually gets a little bit bigger because you have an extra negative that can't be pulled on positives. Isoelectronic, which we've talked about before, means you have the same number of electrons. All right, so calcium versus calcium plus two. Calcium has 20 protons. Calcium plus two has 20 protons. The neutral atom would have 20 electrons. Now that we form this positive two, we now only have 18 electrons, which means potassium, I'm sorry, calcium is going to be electro, um, isoelectronic with argon because argon, a neutral atom, also has 18 electrons. Chlorine has 17 protons. Chlorine minus one has 17 protons. A neutral atom of chlorine has 17 electrons and chlorine with a negative one has 18 electrons. So again, it's isoelectronic with argon because it has 18 electrons. And then calcium plus two and chlorine minus one are also isoelectronic with each other. Which one would have the larger ionic radius? Well, magnesium or magnesium losing two electrons. Magnesium's gonna be larger because when you lose electrons, you get a little bit smaller bromine or bromine minus one. Well minus one you gain an electron so that would be a little bit larger. Aluminum plus three or sodium plus one. Well the more electrons you lose the smaller the atom gets so Na plus one would be larger. Reactivity is how easily the atom gains or loses electrons. Metals tend to lose electrons. They form cations. When you lose electrons, you form a positive charge, which is called a cation. The larger the atom is, the easier it is to lose, so therefore the more reactive metal it is. So francium is our most reactive metal. Now on the other side of the periodic table, you have nonmetals. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons. They form anions. The smaller the atom, the easier it is to gain, the more reactive. So the smallest nonmetal that's going to gain electrons is fluorine. So fluorine is the most reactive nonmetal. You can't think about group 18 for this because group 18 is non-reactive. And our last trend is metallic character. Remember metallic means that they're going to lose electrons easily. Well, if you lose electrons easily, then you have to be a larger atom. And the lower left is largest. So as you go down to the lower left of the periodic table, you become more metallic. So if we think about um, these pairings, which one has more metallic character, cesium or nickel? Cesium would because it's a larger atom. And then gold would, because gold is the larger atom. So both of those are going to lose electrons easier than their paired 